Now, most of the 26 victims in the Harrison fire were executives attending a meeting in the conference center. The Nestle Company of White Plains lost many of its top managers. Some of the company's executives are now helping to identify the bodies of their colleagues. It was a cold morning, December 4th, 1980. Fire started at about 10.20 a.m. on a third floor conference room, spread incredibly fast. 39 years ago, a fire at the Stouffer's Inn, a luxury hotel and conference center in Westchester County. Well, no one really had a warning. People escaped, but 26 people died before they could get out. Each red dot on this floor plan represents a victim. And those people were dead in less than 30 minutes from asphyxiation. More than two dozen people killed, mostly middle-aged men on business trips. My father was only 39 years old. I was only in fourth grade when it happened. David Feet's father, James, an executive with Aero Electronics, one of the companies inside. He was one of 13 executives that died in one of the rooms that only had one exit. Now, nearly four decades later, he still has questions. The cause of the fire was never fully known. Here's the problem with arson. They are the most difficult cases to prove. In the early 1980s, former prosecutor Jeffrey Orlando worked the case for the district attorney's office. We investigated every possible aspect. They eventually zeroed in on a hotel employee who told conflicting stories. And we interviewed him four times. Investigators say Luis Marine, seen here in this courtroom sketch, was in the country illegally from Guatemala. They claimed he set that fire so he could heroically put it out and keep his job but it got out of control. They can't fire a hero, and so he would get his job back, and then he could go to the immigration authorities and they would give him a green card. Marine said that wasn't true, later admitting, though, that he may have accidentally spilled sterno, a jelly-like fuel placed under coffee urns in the area where the fire started. The jury didn't buy it. And they convicted. Unanimous, it has to be unanimous, and they convicted. But just four days later, the judge reversed the murder and arson convictions, saying the evidence was legally insufficient. Orlando, the judge insisted, was too persuasive beyond the facts. It was beyond heartbreaking. Appeals to overrule the judge's decision failed, and the Stover's in case faded from the headlines. Families unsure what to think. Fire started right in this area here. Now, after all these years, a new perspective. I was a criminal investigator in the district attorney's office of Westchester County. Greg Albanese has never spoken publicly about the case before. I don't believe that the real scenario uh, is understood by everybody on this case. He says yes. Initial tests showed a gasoline-like substance indicating arson. It was a finding of hydrocarbon, which is a base chain element of petroleum product, i.e. gasoline. But he says there was a later test of another slab of concrete not related to the fire. We found the same presence of hydrocarbons. Albanese believes that's proof there wasn't an elevated level of accelerant at the point of origin. At the 11th hour, he came in and told the right story that he dropped a sterno. He could have very easily thought he put this fire out, but in fact, he didn't. Orlando remains unconvinced. I sleep at night. You know, I, I know he did it. And I have no remorse about him being convicted. The Stouffer's tragedy, along with another deadly fire at MGM Grand in Las Vegas, did eventually lead to massive safety overhauls in the hotel industry, everything from sprinklers to emergency exits. We can't even tell how many lives were saved by this afterwards. I'm glad the laws were changed. I'm not glad the fire happened. David has now started a website, Stouffer'sInFire.com. He's hoping to connect with family members of those other victims. My father and everyone else that died in that fire deserves to be remembered. They deserve to have a place where people can find out why they died, how they lived. Now, we attempted to contact Luis Marine to get his version of how this happened. We did not hear back. If you have a case you'd like the tape room to investigate, email us at the tape room podcast at foxtv.com. Again, the tape room podcast at foxtv.com. Dan Bowens, Fox 5 News.